Last epoch. It is upon us. So thanks again, gentlemen. Something great dropped just earlier. Two hours ago, actually. Already. And it's the news patch notes. Well, not actually patch notes. It's pre-patch blog post kind of thing. And this covers a lot of quality of life changes for Last Epoch that will be coming with 1.1. I've only glanced over it and I noticed it's a lot, actually. So we're going to read this one by one, so this is probably going to take a bit, but... Um, there's also going to be on YouTube in the video below. There will be chapters. You can sort of switch ahead if you're interested in something or it takes you too long. Also, let me know if you actually want a condensed version of this. Or if you like the, the full thing that is super long. Let me know in the comments below what you think of it. So, let's go with it. All right, um, yeah, quality of life changes. So this is not about balance or anything. This is just quality of life. Uh, things that will be coming to 1.1 on the 9th. If you're not the full patch notes, will cover everything being added, changed or fixed. Looks at the root count of patch note posts. Yeah, that's going to be huge because this is already insanely big, but whatever. This section will be covering some of the much requested quality of life updates to the most commonly used mechanics in game. Changes to blessings. Now we knew that this would come, right? Basically, you can now all the blessings you have discovered once. It's actually called respect blessings. That's interesting. All the blessings you have discovered once with bosses, you can now just choose. You don't have to kill the boss again, which was very annoying and tedious before. Now you can just respect them in there. That's great. But there was something in there. Um, yes. Also interesting, by the way, this is a new NPC, right? Because this is where the monoliths are on the right, right? And then she's just standing here, just chilling. Same symbol as the respec passive one, but okay. Fair the ability to quickly and easily change your blessings without losing progress. You will now find NPC in the end of time next to the monolith of fate. Yes, for a small gold fee, this NPC will enable you to swap between the blessings your character has earned or the minimum rolled versions of blessings earned on your other characters in the same game mode. Wait, like a blessing stash? Oh, so this is actually shared between... This is account-wide. Wow, okay. I mean, it says minimum roll. That is annoying. So on all the other characters you can get, you can use the blessings minimum rolled from the other ones you have discovered. Why not just give us the ones we rolled? That's kind of weird to me, but okay. After infinity boss and unlocking new blessings, all of those blessing options will be saved to the blessing stash at the current roll values, if I them previously, okay. This includes the blessings which you do not select when you kill a monolith boss, yeah of course. You may then switch between any of these blessings without losing the role values you earned. For alts, this means once you have defeated the timeline, we will be able to swap out the blessing you have earned with any blessing from another character. That it shares a stash with. Okay, so this is um, not for SSF. Blessings earned on other characters will be usable at their minimum role values until a better role is unlocked. Pre-1.1 characters will have access to their non-equipped but discovered blessings as swap options save the minimum roll. Oh, I see, okay. And currently equipped blessings will persist as an option with its current roll saved. I see. So that's just for the transition into the new 1.1 patch. For example, if character A has earned the grand cruelty of Formosa's blessing with a 68% roll, it will be saved to their stash. Should they earn the blessing again with a higher or choose to take the blessing, it will add it to their stash at a higher. Yeah, of course. Once character B has defeated the required blood frost and death timeline, they will be able to equip the grand thingy at its lowest value of 50% chance to increase one drop rate, even if they have not earned this blessing yet. Yeah, of course. Yeah, okay, so in short, that just means um, your alt will always have all the discovered blessings, but at minimum roll. And you, you can get the high roll, but for that, you actually have to kill the boss again. 
Okay. Oh, that's actually kind of crazy, right? We'll only have to complete the normal version of a timeline to access Empowered Timeline Blessings. Although I still think it just should give us the ability to do Empowered Timelines right away. Whatever. Ladder Improvements. I have actually never looked at the ladder screen, to be honest, because I could not care less. So I don't know if this is different. I can't tell you. I guess it is. Whoops. That's a bit large. We understand that ladders and competition are important to a dedicated portion of our player base, and accuracy is an integral part of those. To expand the opportunities, our players have to officially challenge each other. We are adding a brand new level ladder to last epoch. This will track the race to level 100 by showing the leading cycle characters with the highest experience totals and a timestamp displaying when they reach level 100. Where do I see this? Oh. Okay. Oh, so the leader is just who has the most XP right now. Doesn't show it here though, which is kind of weird. Normal hardcore, I see. Level arena, ah, uh, gotcha. But it's just an additional... But that's just in the beginning of the cycle, right? And then the first... After the, a few people got it, it's kind of pointless. Well, okay. You also have added timestamps to arena levels to show when the player earned the rank. Okay. Monolith Timeline Search. Can I make this bigger? I can not. It's annoying. With 1.1, we are adding a search box to the timeline map with buttons for co common reward searches. This creates a quick way to filter and search for desired echo types and rewards with matching notes highlighted on the map. It's super small. I can't make it bigger. Oh, you can just click on Uniques, for example, and then show, like, circles them. Okay. And you can also search set. Uh, I see. Okay. Can I search for like waves? So I don't have to play waves, monoliths? It doesn't say it here, but. What is this button? Select difficulty. That's new, isn't it? I don't think we had this before. Did we? Interesting. Can it just change corruption like that? I doubt it, but whatever this button is, it's new. Loot filter improvements. Okay, okay, okay. We heard you. Loot filters are getting some new filtering options. You will not be able to add multiple FX conditions to a single rule. Okay. For example, you can have one condition for boots to only show if they have movement speed at tier 6 or higher. Nice. Another condition to also include at least tier 5 or higher dexterity, vitality or strength. Ah, okay. I see. We will also, so basically you can have two, or like more than the two. One with tier 6 and tier 5. So you can search better for good exalts, basically. You will also now have the option to show the relevant filter rule number. Filter rule number. Oh, on the end of the label names. The while. The loot filter is open. What is, I don't understand this. You have now the option to show the relevant filter rule number on the end of the label names while the loot filter is open. Oh, I see. It's uh, here on the on the left. T two, scepter, T three, T four. There is a number. But whatever that. Whatever that number is, though. <coughs> um, okay, hold up one second. One second. Like, what does that number even mean? Mm. 
You will also be able to show or hide affixes that are incompatible with the item type you are creating a rule for. Yeah, I knew about this. Let's name potential and evils will filtering. Crit and stat X. Admittedly, I never put much effort into the loot filter, so I don't know exactly what any of that means, except for the LP. <laughs> um, this, I don't know. This is a bit weird, but whatever. Item faction changes. Since we introduced our item factions, we have always wanted to provide options that suit everyone's preferred playstyle and also feel rewarding. Thankfully, we provided plenty of feedback and suggestions for our team to work with, and below, we are sharing the upcoming new ranks and changes to the item factions. Progression speed, speed. speed has also been taken into account when including the new ranks and it requires less reputation to achieve the maximum rank in 1.1. Oh. I think I'm not even ranked 10 at this point and I played 400 hours. With only one faction. So that's good. 1.1 each rank in item factions also now provides plus 5% increased favor gain. No. Maximum. Oh, it's rank 12 now. More ranks. We have 60% increased favor gain. Damn. However, experience now scales less with corruption than it did at high corruption values. And favor gain is based on experience gain. Just casually dropping by a balance change like this, right? Experience now scales less with corruption than it did at high corruption before, I guess. So this is... We knew this would be coming, right? Because they hinted on this for quite a while. High corruption is not the goal of the game. The game is balanced around 300 corruption. Anything higher is pointless. And they are apparently now throwing the the whole game and the balance in that direction. But I kind of like that they're not just trying to like making it impossible to get into higher corruption. They're also making it less desirable, right? Because you gain less XP, so it's kind of pointless. Interesting. At all normal corruption values, you'll be gaining more favor than before at high ranks. But at extremely high corruption, you'll be gaining less than before. That's pretty much exactly the same like the item drops, right? Item drops work exactly the same with corruption. The higher you get in corruption value, the less the increase in better items is. So when you go from 100 to 200, for example, the corruption, you get like 50% better items or whatever. The numbers are not correct, but just to get the idea. When you go from 1000 to 2000 corruption, you only get like 5% better. So the higher you get in corruption, the less better items you actually get, and it's really fucking pointless any higher than a thousand it's not even designed for that so that makes sense overall this means that getting into high corruption and being able to farm it efficiently is much less important to farming favor it could just stop at here getting high corruption and being able to farm it efficiently is much less important that's the idea we knew this would be coming nice i like that so it's actually great um, the factions now make more sense because you actually get the higher ranks faster. While we were overall happy with where item progression is in the Merchant's Guild, there were some ranks we felt offered very little in terms of upgrades as other ranks included all the relevant items. What? Some ranks we felt offered very Oh, I see, yeah. Yeah. To make progression feel smoother, we have split these ranks and introduced two more. These changes are highlighted below. Okay. We also had your feedback on the Bazaar search function and the team is currently working on updates to the system, especially affix searching, which we plan to release soon as it's ready during, during the cycle. Okay, so this is not coming right away. But yeah, uh, search function, big thing. So I'm supposed to read this, right, while this is scrolling. Is that what you're telling me? Sell all items and buy basic items. Okay, buy set items. Yeah, we knew this. Specific unique items. Buy all idols. Exalted weapons and offhands. Exalted armor. Unique weapons and offhands. Okay. So they just split this up in, in unique weapons and offhands in the other stuff. Huh? All exalted. All uniques. Legendary weapons and offhands. 
Legendary armor, all legend. Okay, I see. I want to know the COF though. Well, it actually says it here. Okay. Unchanged, unchanged. What's changed actually? You can buy exhausted armor in the bazaar or directly from other players. Boots, gloves, hand body armor. Split from previous rank seven. Previously rank six. Okay. Oh, this was ranked 10 earlier. Okay, so basically it just extended it a little bit. I see. Circle of Fortune. I had your feedback. Uh, I was lacking when farming bosses and experimental items from Exiled Mages. With dresses, we have added two completely new ranks that increase the amount of boss specific loot and to increase the amount of experimental affix items Exiled Mages provide. No. Oh. Rank 12, previously rank 10, which duplicated prophecies, has received a rework. I think we knew this, right? From the death stream. One by one, instead of duplicating the rewards, the prophecy now act as if you had two of them, meaning it can roll different uniques. For example, instead of getting two of the same rings from a single prophecy duplication, you will now get the ring prophecy twice, which will in most... Uh, I see, that's better. Because the duplication was pretty much useless in most, most of the times, so unless you wanted the item exactly as it is twice. But, but when do we ever want that, right? So what do we have? Show me the controls. Pause. Uh, enemy item drop chance. Okay, sure. Rune of Ascendance. Yeah. Was this already there? I don't even know. Yeah, it's unchanged, it says. Okay. Full set drop chance. Yeah, we knew this. This is 4 now. Monolith Echo Reward Upgrade. 35% chance to double reward from Monolith Echoes. Oh, so that was, was number four, nine before, or level nine rather. I mean, they still suck, so who cares, right? Yeah, okay, this is same double experimental items. Excited Magic has dropped twice as many experimental items. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Uniques are twice likely to have legendary potential. T7 are twice as common. Boss loot. Yeah, this is new, right? 150% increased drop rate for any specific rewards they have. That's great. Items that would drop a rare have a 25% chance to become exalted. And this one. Okay. Yeah, of course. It's just the, the boss specific ones. All unique enemies that display a boss health power. Doesn't this also apply to mages and nemesis encounters then? Like the boss health ball thingy? It must be, right? So you actually are twice as likely to get the mad alchemist ladle. Yeah, we do this. Okay, nice. That's good. I like it. Especially if you get to the ranks faster, that's cool. Gaze of Orbis, this land over here. That's a new thing though, isn't it? I don't know. Corruption is an integral part of last epoch's monolith of fate endgame system. This is a mechanic players spend a lot of time with. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Increase the amount of experience gained and the likelihood of finding rare items as well as unlocking the final two blessing slots. What? Does it? I didn't know. It seems to become familiar. Blah, 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 blah. Previously, your Gaze of Orbis had diminishing returns. In 1.1, each Gaze of Orbis will grant 12 corruption. It takes away the confusion over how much extra corruption you should expect to earn per Gaze. You no longer feel like you can waste Gaze due to the removal of diminishing returns per additional Gaze. I thought it's just whenever you kill the boss of that monolith, you just gain more gaze. Wasn't that the thing? Not a thing to have managed corruption. Now only four gazes will be consumed at one time. If instead of all gazes being consumed at once, the rest will now carry over the next echo web. Why? The amount of gaze consumed is kept at four to avoid the possibility of adding too much corruption and experience a sudden increase in difficulty after killing a shade. 
Okay. While increasing corruption in your higher corruption timelines, which could lead to unfortunate player deaths. <sighs> ah, fine. I guess, I mean, 4 times 12, that's 48, right? So it's a lot of corruption increasing once, so I guess it's fine. You have a change to make that less painful too. Upon dying to a shell for Abyss, players will not only lose one gaze instead of losing them all. So the game is easier now. I thought they made it harder. Corruption is easier, I guess. What is weird to me is... Is this change. Because Mike always said they don't want to have that high of a corruption in the game. But now this looks like you can get to a higher corruption faster. I guess if you build can do it. Interesting. Yeah, that, that's what I what I said. Corruption can be increased faster as consuming a full stack of gaze will pro yeah, okay, pretty much what I just said. No specific changes have been made to the current corruption catch-up mechanic. What current corruption catch-up mechanic? I don't think that existed because I couldn't feel it. Okay, we also know that getting corruption in the party has been less than optimal. That's true. That only the player who started the Echo would earn Gates of Orbis to help them increase corruption. This has been changed so all players in the party who have the required stability to be granted a blessing when the boss is defeated will also gain a stack of Gates. Multiplayer is still all over the place in my eyes. It, it just feels weird. But maybe they, have, they find something. Class changes. Oh, damn. This will be highlighting a few of the many upcoming changes to various skills and passives. The team has taken on board a lot of your feedback about how some skills feel outdated and have amped up their arsenal, so to speak. Well, the full patch notes will cover every single change, and that is a lot. Today, we're focusing on a few frequently mentioned cases. Channeling. Yeah, these suck. Mostly. Bug me in the community that using a channel skill stopped all mana regeneration. That's not really my problem with channel skills. My problem is that you, except for like the Ghost Flame, when you're channeling, you stand still, which means you're very vulnerable to all sorts of attacks from bosses. So you have to break up your channeling all the time. The Ghost Flame point where you can move while channeling, that is great. But of course, mana region, I mean, yeah, but you're channeling, so, I mean. Especially in builds where a zero cost channel skill triggered another that still cost mana, meaning players would need to ease off the gas and wait for the mana pool to restore. Mm, I see. Most channel skills, skills which prevented mana regeneration have been changed. They no longer prevent base mana, most by the way, not all. They no longer prevent base mana region, however, the base mana region amount, what does that aid mean? Aid is the base, okay. Has been added to their channel cost. Oh, I see. This change has been introduced so players that uh, invest into mana regen feel rewarded for doing so without having a negative impact on players that have not. Yeah, basically it's just more expensive instead of just not being able to. So you can... That's actually nice. That's pretty much how Diablo does it, right? You can come to a point where you generate more mana than you spend for your skill, so you can indefinitely keep channeling it. That's good, I like this. It helps a lot. That does help a lot. Skill changes. All classes are getting balance updates, so don't worry if you don't see your favorite skill. The full breakdowns of those will be, yeah. Here's the skills and passive changes. Disintegrate. So this is Integrate Viable now, is that what you're telling me? Has historically been highly dependent on an unintended interaction between two unique items, Ingvar's Head and Gambler's Fellas. Yeah, this combination allowed you to greatly overcap critical strike chance, which offered a massive multiplayer to this Blah. Wasn't a healthy interaction, the mechanic was easily overlooked. We have updated older nodes and added new nodes for Disintegrate and its skill tree to give it the power it needs inherently and stop relying on this interaction. So while combining Gambler's Fantasy and Ingvar's head will no longer work in 1.1, damn. 
To integrate, it should have many more build options available to it. The full list of changes will be included in the patch notes, of course. 25 changes notes just for this integrate. Okay. What happened? Oh, I did something. What is going on? Why is it doing this? Though today we'll have a look at some of the most impactful notes. Okay. The base damage on this integrate has been increased from 15 to 24, and its added damage effectiveness from 300 to 480%. Okay, that's a huge buff. Who come answer? Is there anything new here? Not really, right? Mana cost 1. And that's going to be 9 then, isn't it? Because of the base mana cost. Why does it not reflect this here, though? At base mana region cost. For every two seconds you spend channeling this integrate, you gain a stack of Luke Commander. Up to two stacks and each stack lasts four seconds. Global more damage to ignited or shocked and global reduced mana cost. It's like a must have, isn't it? Is it not? Because like the mana cost reduction is pretty neat. That's like 12% and three points. Hyperfocal. This integrate deals more lightning damage based on your maximum mana. 1% per 8 max mana. Flame Vent. When you stop channeling this integrate, you cast Fireball at nearby enemies twice per second spent channeling up to a maximum. You cast Fireball at nearby enemies twice per second. Oh, per second spent channeling. Okay. Okay. So if you channel for 5 seconds, you shoot 10 fireballs, okay. Up to maximum. What's the maximum? 2 per point, so that's 6. Ugh, come on. Give me 50. What is this with 6 fireballs, man? Consumes the man 100%, okay. Huh, interesting. What is this? That's new, isn't it? Is that a new area? This thing here, that's new. Shibaz as a skill is one which has been in the background for some time, that's true. If you notice when people talk about melee skills, Shibaz often doesn't even get a mention. New skills, the boss can have not many builds because it provides a guaranteed stun, it requires a long cooldown. Oh, there was a certainly a lot of space available to improve Shibaz. Okay. Shibaz's co space cooldown has been increased to 18 seconds. Wow, 18 seconds. Over stunning enemies will now quickly make Shibaz available again by reducing the uranium cooldown by 20% when you stun an enemy. No. Concern from any source, including other skills. Yeah, that's cool. So if you have any other stun sources, you reduce cooldown again, huh? Flurry of Blows. Shibash no longer has a cooldown, but it costs significantly more mana and no longer has a guaranteed stun. Okay. But what's the stun chance then? No cooldown, so you can't just keep bashing? Nice. Indomitable Force. Shield bash ha hash. <laughs> Shield bash has. That's difficult. Added melee damage based on your block effectiveness. Oh yeah, we saw this. <clears throat> so block is actually even stronger now and gives you more damage. That's nice. Increase attack speed scaling with your block chance up to maximum. If there's no cooldown thing, you can basically just keep spamming this, right? Not bad. Avalanche. Oh, the good one. Anything new we see here? Not really, right? No. Avalanche is a very well-known skill, unfortunately, for when it's used by enemies rather than champ players. That is true. You always gotta run from the rhyme giant. We're going to change that in 1.1 with over 20 changes and adjustments to its skill tree. One? Okay, so it's also completely reworked like Disintegrate. Okay, base function has been reworked. It is no longer a channeled spell by default. It now costs 50 mana and creates one large boulder at a target location. What about 10 smaller boulders around the target for 2 seconds? It is now always targetable and the boulders fall within a circle instead of an extended rectangle. It has no cooldown. Damn. No cooldown, my friend. It is insane. Let's just ban this guy real fast. There we go.
Huh. That's cool. Avalanche hits have an increased chance to stun enemies. Additionally, the impact from the larger boulders have a chance to create your upheaval towards new enemy. This is mana equal to a portion. Damn, Shaman's gonna be great again, huh? So we're gonna play some Shaman. Improves Avalanche base critical strike chance. Thank you. When a large boulder critically strikes, it has a chance to drop a small boulder at the same location. That's nice. That's cool, I like it. Stormcaller. Boulder hits have a chance to grant you a storm stack. Oh! Hello, Lightning Frost build. Damn, okay. So Shaman actually getting some lore here, nice. Skills aren't the only area receiving balance changes. We're also visiting visiting passives for many masteries, with a few in particular getting more attention. On all of these current defenses rework, today we want to give you a brief look at some of the many passive changes for Sorcerer, Forge God, and Shaman. Yeah, that's the, the three worst ones in the game right now. Sorcerer, Arcane Current. Wait, that's base class. Oh yeah. Is it? No, that's just Sorcerer. Right, never mind, that's not Mage, that's Sorcerer. Do more lighting damage? To shock the enemies. That's five percent. Your skills, which cost at least forty men, inflict a spark charge on him. That means we can use that unique offhand. Augmate, you have additional spell damage, and you have a chance to refund a portion of the mana cost of your skills on use. These values are doubled if you have 300 max mana and tripled if you have 1000. I've never played a sorcerer with 1k mana. 1% per point, so that's 5. 7 per point. Was that like 21, right? Okay, and doubles or triples it. That's pretty nice. Mana shell, did this exist before already? 4 per point, 1% per point. What per second per 10 max mana plus one. Yeah, nice. So the Resorcerer now also has ward properly. We needed that. Dragon Breath. Increased area of area skills 4%. Elemental damage 7 per point. Ooh, that's 70%. Yeah, Dragon Breath is really good. Like 10 points in this. Especially area skills. Mana well. Increased mana 3% per point. It's a lot. Mana spent gain as well. Nice. Okay, so basically the sorcerer is getting the the rune master wall treatment, pretty much. Forge guard. I don't know anything about. It. I never played the forge guard, so let's still look at it. You have a chance to cast a shield from a ring of shields when you block a hit, and you have additional block effectiveness per shield. I oh, actually we saw this already. Yeah. Give more damage per point of strength for beating a two-handed weapon, yeah. That's kind of crazy. Crit chance with two-handed, 10% per point, that's 80%. That is a lot. You get a bonus depending on the type of weapon you're wielding. Okay. We knew this as well. I actually thought this was Paladin initially, but it's Forge God. Yeah, I don't know anything about the Forge God, so let's just get over this. Shaman. Swirling Maelstrom. You have additional health and mana and have a chance to cast Maelstrom when hit. When hit. When I'm being hit? Yeah, when I'm being hit, I guess. Okay, that's cool. You have additional Endurance Threshold per stack of Maelstrom. Yeah, so we're actually getting some good survivability for the Shaman, finally. You and your minions deal additional cold damage with spells and attacks, and your hits have a chance to inflict frostbite. That goes up to 10. Minion cold damage, frostbite chance, minion frostbite. Um, the totems also count as minions, right? So that's pretty neat. Additional spell lightning damage. Goes up to 10. Lightning Penetration for 5 points of attunement, okay. 
He's got some cool, cool passives. I like it. Iron Bog, with additional health and armor, and these effects are tripled for your totems. Eight point bonus. Damn, did this exist before an eight point bonus? You have additional health region scaling with your attunement. This effect is triple for your totems. Health region per free attunement. Totem stun immunity. Okay, this is pretty strong. But eight points in this, man. But yeah, we need health and armor on the, sh on the shaman. It's not much, though. Like, this just gives us 100 health. That's like... Gift of Disguise. Oh, I think we knew this already. And uh, attack speed 2% per point. Cast speed 2%. Yeah, yeah. Directly summon a totem and gains Frenzy for a short duration. Oh, now the big one. Look at this. Vault Balance. Since the introduction of experimental items and with them... Oh yeah, missing life granted as Vault Ethics on Gloves. Vault has been a dominant force in the world of Terra. In addition to this is the Rune Master's ability to generate Vault and recently Warlock and Healing Hands' ability to generate massive amounts of Vault. Health as Vault has become such a big talking point and we haven't been blind to the conversation. Specific changes to be introduced to rein in some of these methods of vault generation. This isn't the first time water has come up as a hot topic. Nature of decaying, but otherwise being infinitely stackable, yeah, it's easy for one to quickly fall out of line. So while we're making those individual changes to outlier methods of vault generation, basically nerfing Rune Master, we're also making a more significant change to water war. Mm. Vault decay formula. Oh, I didn't know it was that line before. So DK rate just gets way higher the more you have. Okay, I see. The big thing you want to clarify with this is this formula change is not a full on nerf. It kind of is, isn't it? But there's certainly the potential for outliers of high wall generation being reined in. There's also natural and intended methods of wall generation which feel too weak. As such, a change in the formula results in stronger retention of ward when below 4000 ward. I cannot zoom. Oh, there we go. But dude, that's minimal, isn't it? It's true. Like at 2000 volt, you get less DK. But it's at 4K where it sort of breaks even. And honestly, most builds, especially with like Xanginus, where this is your only health, like 4K is like the minimum for a good end game, end game build. 4K health. I don't know if that's enough. Much faster he came in over 10k. Yeah, that's basically just for the super OP world builds, right? <laughs> what the fuck is this? Okay. Trying to be a bit more readable, and for those of us that hate maths. Roland! Hi, how's it going? Oh wait, I'm end breaks are ending. The change here is going from 40% of your ward per second to 20%. Plus 0 0.005 of your ward square per second. This means normally lower ward generating builds such as ward per second or hybrid ward health builds will now be able to maintain their ward a little better. Okay, so basically... Hi Roman. Basically... The hybrid builds with health and generating ward, like Lich, for example, or even Sorcerer, they do better, but the Exanctionist OP ward generators, they do worse. Which makes sense, I like that. That is good and well. We look forward to seeing these changes make your journey for return feel even better, and thank you for all the feedback and suggestions. Nice. Exactly. Anyway, yeah. So let me know what you think of that in the comments below. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the 9th of July.